Okay, so we're going to start talking about position time graphs for constant acceleration. Let's get our pen here. There we go. For constant acceleration. So we're just going to look at PT graphs for accelerating objects. All right, so here's our, here's our data points. And the first thing you'll notice a position time graph when there's a change in velocity is that it's no longer a straight line. It'll be a curved line. And uh, this curved line will be is based because position does not change uh, numerically. And you saw in the last time when we, we, we labeled the drag racer from the example uh, last time about each, uh, each second how much further he went. So this in a position time graph for acceleration, we see a curve. Now... If we see a curve that's upward, acceleration is greater than zero. Obviously, a straight line in the position time curve is that there's no acceleration. We have a constant velocity. Now, if we see a downward curve, acceleration is less than zero. So it's a negative acceleration. So it's either a positive acceleration, zero, or a negative acceleration. Again, looking at the curve. Now, the magnitude of the accelerations based on how steep the curve is. Obviously the steeper the curve, the more acceleration you have, right? The steeper the curve in the negative, the greater the acceleration. But again, the, you know, the steepness of the curve will tell you how much it accelerates. So when we look at this equation, each term has a graphical meaning, okay? That's the initial position. That's the vertical intercept. The slope of the initial part of the curve is equal to the initial velocity because time will be 1, right? The sharpness of the curve indicates a magnitude of the acceleration. So that is because of this. And, you know, you, you don't know a whole lot about graphing. Some of you may based on your math. But this leads us to that curved parabola shape. So, talk again. Initial position is the intercept. The initial slope, the slope is based off of the initial velocity. And then curvature is based off the acceleration. The more acceleration, the greater the curve. So let's rank these curves in order of initial position from most negative to most positive. So the most negative initial position is right here, A, then D, then C, then B. Okay, so that's most negative to most positive. Rank in, in order of initial velocity, okay? So we look at slope from the most negative to the most positive. So negative slope, obviously D is the most negative slope. So D is going to be the most negative velocity. Um, A is going to be the most positive velocity because that has a pretty high slope there. So now we just got to look at B and C. B looks flat. C looks like it's going slightly down. So I will put C here and B here. That's how I would rank them in order of most negative to most positive when we talk about initial velocity. And now in order of acceleration, from the most negative to the most positive. Again, the most negative acceleration is the one that curves down this way the most, be D. Then I would say C. Then I would say B. And then I would say A. So it's very similar to ranking the curves in order of initial velocity. Um, speeder travels at 18.2 meters per second. The instant he passes a marked police car, the police begin their pursuit. The speeder maintains a constant velocity, so the guy speeding doesn't speed up, but the police car accelerates 4.5 meters per second square. Show that the police car catches up with the speeder after 8.09 seconds and determine the location where this occurs. All right, A lot to think about here. Don't get overwhelmed, okay? So we got the speeder, all right, traveling 18.2 meters per second, constant, no acceleration. The police car begins the pursuit, right, starting at zero meters per second and speeds up with an acceleration of 4.50 meters per second. So we want to say after 8.9 seconds, we want to show that they meet up and the location, okay? So let's, let's take a look at the speeder first. The speeder is a constant velocity of 18.2. So if I take 18.2 in distance, I don't know, but time is 8.09 seconds. I can solve for distance, and I will. My distance is just going to be speed of 18.2 times my time of 8.09. And 
and the distance here is 147.2 meters. So that's how far the speeder is going to get before he gets pulled over, based on our based on our time frame. Now, let's see if we can prove that with the police car. Well, the police car, we know our initial position is zero because that's where we're starting. We're going to find our final position. Our initial velocity is zero, so v o t plus one half a t squared is the equation I'm going to use. So I'm going to say zero plus my initial velocity zero plus my acceleration of 4.5, and then I'm going to take 8.09 all squared. And x final position. When I do all this math, 5 times 4.5 times 8.09 squared gives me a nice easy 147.3 meters when I round, but that's pretty close. And so I've proven the point and the location is 147 meters away from where they start the pursuit. Um, so let's take a look at a, at a graph here, position time graph, um, that shows acceleration and deceleration. So right here, our position's increasing in the positive, and we're starting to slope. Slope tells us that as we move upward, we're starting to slow down, right? When we reach here, it means we are at zero velocity, okay? Then as we start to go down, we're going to increase our speed. So this is like we're throwing an object straight upward, okay? So the ball goes up, slows down until we get to the top of the, of the uh, arc, so as we go up. And then it comes back down, it speeds up due to gravity, and that's what we see. Just an example of another position time graph.